welcome. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV. I'm Jim Cardle. Congressman Lamar Smith represents House District 21 in the U.S. House of Representatives and is chairman of the House Science, Space, and Technology Committee. He's also a member of the House Homeland Security Committee. As former chairman of the judiciary, he continues to serve on that committee and is founder of the House Border Security Caucus as well as the House Media Fairness Caucus. What's the state of the 2016 election with less than a month to go? And what issues are on the mind of Texas voters? We're pleased to be able to visit today with Congressman Lamar Smith from the 21st Congressional District of Texas. Congressman Smith, thanks for joining us today. Good to be here as always, Jim, with you and your viewers and always enjoy our discussion. Well, that goes both ways. The only problem we've got today is there's too much to talk about. So <laughs> let's jump right into it. Um, I've noticed, and you uh, all in the House and Senate up in Congress, you adjourned a couple weeks ago. There's an election coming up we'll get to in a minute, but noticed you're in the middle of a series of fall forums, I believe is what you're calling right. calling them. You've already had a couple. What's on the mind of the Texas voter yeah. right now? And so you're far? right, I do have fall forums. Sometimes they're physical meetings like I'm having now throughout the district. Sometimes they're on the phone. Uh, we call them telephone town meetings, but I think it's Good. important to stay in touch with my constituents, and this is an excellent way of doing it. Uh, on their minds, of course, number one is the presidential race. I hear a lot about that. Uh, and then combine the presidential race with a continuing interest in securing the border, uh, immigration reform, concerned about national security, concerned about, um, when I say national security, that also involves immigration, refugees, Syrian refugees, and so forth. Okay. Uh, the economy uh, is always top. I uh, hear a lot about veterans. I have a lot of veterans in my district as well. So those are probably the three top issues. But number one is politics, presidential, and then immigration, economy, uh, jobs, and uh, national security. Well, you mentioned the, the border security. I know you were involved, for instance, in passing a anti-sanctuary cities bill before we knew about sanctuary <laughs> cities back yeah. in 1996 or 98, I believe. Talk about, if you would, first, though, um, some of the election stuff I want to get into. I know you recently formed the Media Fairness Caucus, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there's so much focus on the supposed bias or the evident bias uh, in the Trump-Clinton campaign. What are you hearing uh, maybe from your constituents and your peers? But talk about the Media Fairness Caucus, uh, the media big fairness, issue these days. The Media Fairness Caucus I started several years ago, not just recently, uh, but several years ago to combat what I perceive as media bias. Uh, in the national liberal publications. It could be the three networks, it could be the New York Times, uh, LA Times, Washington Post, whatever it might be. And so I have a bi-weekly newsletter giving examples of media bias. People can go to my website and get that. I say once a week I give a short speech on the House floor talking about media bias. And I'm not talking about censorship being the answer, but I am talking about the American people need to be aware of the bias and not let it impact them. Uh, I oftentimes caution the media, uh, don't tell the American people what to think, uh, let them make up their own minds and just give them the facts. Uh, but there was a recent public opinion poll that only 15 percent of the American people thought the media coverage of the presidential race was fair and balanced. That's the lowest, I think, on record. Mm -hmm. And uh, the American people, by two to one margin, thought the media were more biased in favor of Hillary Clinton. By the way, this was a month or so ago. Today, I think it would be even more in even favor lower. Of, yeah. of, of, of Hillary Clinton. But I consider media bias, the liberal, national liberal media bias, to be one of the great threats to our country because if the American people don't get the facts, if all they do is get somebody's opinion, but if they don't get the facts, they can't make good decisions. And if the American people can't make good decisions, we lose our democratic form of government. Do you see that both, uh, the focus obviously has been on the national level, but I know you have to deal with yes. the San Antonio press. A lot of people don't realize San Antonio is the sixth largest, I believe larger than Dallas now. Yeah. Do you see some of that when you're talking to the local press too? or is it more the, the evident national well, focus? I'd say the big city papers lean left as well, pretty uh, obviously. Uh, when you go into the rural areas, when you go into smaller communities, mm -hmm. there is less bias. And it just seems to me that the, the big city papers and uh, the national media are way biased, and you see that in this presidential campaign. They are out to destroy Donald Trump, and it's obvious, and they're not hiding it. 
I think they're just absolutely shredding their credibility because in the future, who's going to believe the media that they saw uh, so biased in the presidential race? And, you know, we're no longer getting straight news stories. We're getting uh, editorials. We're getting opinion pieces uh, mm -hmm. that lead the news or on the front page. And I'd like to get us back where the media reports the facts and then lets the American people make up their own minds. Well, thank you again, folks, for joining us for this edition of Texas Insider TV with Congressman Lamar Smith from the 21st Congressional District. Congressman, I mentioned in the introduction that you are one who has recently called for a reinvestigation, and this is transitioning right to uh, the media focus of late, and that has to do with Hillary Clinton's email troubles, WikiLeaks is coming out with a steady stream of stuff, but you recently called for a reinvestigation or reopening of that uh, investigation. Jim, Talk I, about that, if you will. I did. I'm a member of the Judiciary Committee, and we had Director Comey, dire FBI Director, before the committee a few weeks ago, and uh, two things. One, I gave five examples to him of new information that has come out since the FBI concluded its information, it's, it concluded its investigation. Okay. And some of the examples I gave, for example, two of the individuals who maintained Hillary Clinton's server, appeared before Congress and pled the Fifth Amendment against self-incrimination, refused to testify. We had another individual employee of one of those companies take a hammer and destroy two uh, devices, clearly uh, tampering and destroying evidence of federal violation. And there were other examples as well. And I said to the FBI director, it seems to me that all these new developments justify a opening, a reopening of the investigation. And he did not um, uh, commit to that in any shape or form. And I'm disappointed. I can only hope that they are going to investigate further. Uh, but I got into this general subject of Hillary Clinton's server because the science committee that I chair happens to have jurisdiction over this very little agency uh, called National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST is the acronym. Okay. And guess what? They oversee the standards for official use of servers and emails. And so we wanted to find out if the government standards were being upheld. Clearly they were not in the case of Hillary Clinton. And so that's how we got into uh, the investigation ourselves. And I have subpoenaed several individuals. Unfortunately, uh, the main one has been uh, totally um, non-cooperative and will not give us any information whatsoever. It makes me wonder what they're hiding and what's being hidden by others as well. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to keep up what we're doing on the committee. We need to get the facts and the truth to the American people, let them decide whether something illegal, unethical, or criminal went on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it was very telling, even though Director Comey in the end uh, decided not to go to a grand jury and ask for an indictment against Hillary Clinton, he was asked if he had an employee of the FBI do what Hillary Clinton does, what would happen, and basically said the employee would be fired. So it's interesting that we now have somebody who would be fired by the FBI for mishandling classified information and seeking a job promotion to the highest office in the land. Yeah, and, and we'd all like to take a hammer to our cell phones every <laughs> now and then, I'm sure. But how about um, the specific question about who granted immunity to some yes. of these FBI, Hillary Clinton employees or State Department employees? Has there ever been an answer to that yet? One of the most outstanding revelations I felt from Director Comey's recent appearance before the Judiciary Committee was when he said, and none of us knew it, we all assumed it was he himself as FBI director who had made the decisions about granting immunity to various individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, we were particularly interested in the immunity that had been granted to Hillary Clinton's top uh, assistance, and we found out that it wasn't Comey that made those decisions, it was the FBI director herself. This is the same FBI director who said, because of a conflict of interest and my association with Bill Clinton... You're talking about not the FBI director, but the I mean, Department I'm of sorry, Justice. I'm sorry, Attorney General. I mean, yes. Uh, the Attorney General herself had said, I can't make a decision in regard to going to a grand jury and seeking an indictment because of my closeness to Bill Clinton clearly a conflict of interest, but now we're finding out the same person who said she had a conflict of interest was the person who was deciding to grant immunity to Hillary Clinton's top staff. And that struck me as just totally wrong. Uh, we hadn't heard that before. If she had a conflict of interest in one case, she had a conflict of interest in the other. So once again, uh, the Department of Justice, uh, the Attorney General, uh, has been politicized. We've never seen this, I don't think, in American history. There's always been mm -hmm. one department, the Department of Justice, that was above politics. Now we find out they have dirty hands. 
Well, something possibly for you to carry on yes. next session of Congress after the election. Uh, let me change subjects a little bit and maybe talk about something positive if we can. Sure. You've uh, alluded to the fact you're former Judiciary Committee Chairman, still on the Committee on Homeland Security Committee and Chairman of the Space Science and Technology Committee. What are some of the things that uh, we should know that you actually Congress accomplished this session or what are you, you maybe mm -hmm. left looking to do, but particularly some of the positive things. Okay. Uh, well, as far as this Congress goes, and I can talk about the Science Committee that I share, we've enacted 10 uh, bills. One had to do with commercialization space, which is exciting. Uh, what's going to be going up is oftentimes not going to be... Which is a big, big deal. People don't realize you're overseeing NASA, NASA. and we're grounded, so to speak, right now. <laughs> right. We need to get beyond that. I don't think people understand that we're having to pay Russia $70 million to take American astronauts to the International Space Station, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, within two to three years, we should have American astronauts lifting off on American rockets from American soil, uh, finally, long time overdue. We're going to get into space commercialization, we're getting into space tourism, uh, where individuals, um, everyday Americans, are going to be able to go 62 miles up if they can afford the ticket, which is about $250,000. Uh, we're, and we're coming out with new uh, telescopes that are going to enable us to see Earth-like planets um, in, other, in other parts of our galaxy and other solar systems. Uh, so that's all coming up. As far as the next Congress come January, uh, three main issues. We're going to be getting into tax reform, okay. health care reform, and immigration reform. And in particular, I know there's been um, a month ago Aetna announcing that they are pulling out of the state of Texas yes. and shutting down in some other states. In particular, what about the Obamacare, yeah. the status of Obamacare? It's, yeah. it's uh, exchanges are cratering almost by the week. Yeah. What are you seeing is the dynamic there right now? Obamacare is unraveling, and it is unraveling for a couple of reasons. One, uh, it is not liked by the American people. They don't like the double-digit increase in premiums. They don't like their deductibles going uh, up every year. It's exactly the opposite of what they were promised, which is why more people dislike it than like it. But it is collapsing of its own weight, so something has to be done. We're either going to uh, replace it or reform it, uh, and that will frank frankly depend on who is President of the United States. Uh, a President Trump has said he wants to replace it. We still need to cover people with pre-existing conditions. We still have have more competition. Uh, but it'll be private sector driven, you know, tax credits for people to encourage them to get health care insurance. Hillary Clinton has uh, all but said she's going to continue uh, what uh, exists now but involve the government even more. So uh, I tend to think that we need to gov involve the government even less. Mm -hmm. uh, when the government gets its hands on something, it typically is more expensive and less efficient. And uh, if there's one area where we need the best health care for the most people as quickly as possible. It's, a, it's an all health care delivery system. So I'd like to, the Republicans have a couple of bills that we've already introduced, and the question is which direction we're going to go after November. Well, it's not as if people, uh, voters won't be thinking about it with the yeah. renewal, the open season, so to speak, coming up here through the remainder of the year. Let me ask you one final question, Congressman Lamar Smith from the 21st Congressional District. You were on the Homeland Security Committee. I've seen some of your press releases and comments mm -hmm. on the floor about this administration releasing criminal aliens. Uh, also there's cybersecurity, uh, the hacking of WikiLeaks. What uh, from your perspective right now is the greatest concern for the Homeland Security Committee mm -hmm. on the international front particularly? Um, two, uh, two major concerns when it comes to Homeland Security. One, it's the hacking, or I should say cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be beyond hacking. It can be an effort to literally bring down Wall Street and the economic backbone of the country. There can be a cyber attack to disable the electric grid in California. Uh, those are major life-threatening kinds of attacks. Um, but there are other threats to our Homeland Security as well, more human threats. Uh, you mm -hmm. have the threat of uh, both homegrown terrorists as well as terrorists whom we are admitting into our country. The lone wolf, so to speak, the seems to be the... And the terrorist organizations have said they're going to try to infiltrate these refugees who the administration is admitting. Uh, I happen to agree with Mr. Trump and others who say we shouldn't be admitting anyone uh, when we can't check their background. And uh, I don't care where they're from, I don't care what religion they are, 
but they need to have a background we can check and we need to be assured that they are not going to do us harm because we have seen just in the last year how one or two people can kill dozens of innocent Americans. And so uh, we need to be very, very careful in whom we admit to our country and make sure that they're coming for the right reason. Well, I know you've got a lot uh, to be looking at there in particular with the, the vetting, the government ability to not or or to vet you've said before mm -hmm. the system's broken yep. is there any hope on the horizon for actually mm -hmm. implementing or adhering to the, yeah. the vetting process as I would it? hope in the next Congress we would focus on securing the border first that's okay. sort of the absolute threshold issue secure the border first and we can talk about other things but to secure the border first means not allowing a half a million people to come into our country illegally every year it, it, it means uh, vetting, checking the backgrounds of people who are refugees, making sure that they're real refugees to begin with, mm -hmm. and uh, having an entry-exit system so we know who's left when they're supposed to leave. We need to enforce the no sanctuary cities that was in the bill that I introduced that became law in, in 1996. That has not been enforced. Uh, there's lots of things we can do to save the lives of the American people, uh, mainly reverse some of the policies that the Obama administration has put into place. Every year they release thousands of illegal immigrants convicted of serious crimes back into our neighborhoods, put them back on our streets, where a third will commit additional crimes. Mm -hmm. Why we do that to the American people intentionally, I have no ex earthly explanation. Well, speaking of entrance and exit strategies, I'm going <laughs> to shut it down at about at this point. I know you got to yeah. get on the road, and Congressman Lamar Smith, as always, appreciate your work for Texas, for the nation, appreciate you coming by today. Thank you, Jim. Anytime you know what's going to happen from here, too. Yeah. Folks, I appreciate you joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV. I'm Jim Cardle, and remember, you're either an insider or you're an or you're not. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Congressman. Thanks for letting me say that. <laughs>